Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and this is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. Recently, a large study was published that confirmed what a number of previous studies had also shown, which is that myocarditis following COVID vaccination is milder than myocarditis following COVID. So how did anti-vaxxers manage to spin this into a story suggesting vaccination was worse than infection? Stick around and you'll find out. But first, let's go back to the science and have a look at what the study shows. So this is a study. It's called Clinical Outcomes of Myocarditis After SARS-CoV-2 mRNA Vaccination in four Nordic countries, population-based cohort study. And what they did in this study is they compared the outcomes of three cohorts of myocarditis patients aged 12 years and older who were admitted to hospital. The three cohorts were people who got myocarditis within 28 days of a positive test for COVID, people who got myocarditis within 28 days of a COVID vaccine and people who got myocarditis who didn't fit the two other categories. And in each case, they looked at 90 days of follow-up from admission to hospital. This is what they found. Compared with conventional myocarditis, people who got myocarditis after a positive COVID test were more likely to suffer heart failure and more likely to die, with a relative risk of 1.48 for heart failure and 2.35 for death, although the confidence interval for heart failure includes one, so that's not statistically significant. In contrast, people who got myocarditis after vaccination had a significantly reduced chance of heart failure or death. The relative risk for heart failure was 0.56 and the relative risk for death was 0.48. Of course, this is across the whole population, but we know that myocarditis following vaccination is actually more common in young people. So... The authors also looked at this. This table shows the results for those aged 12 to 39 years with no predisposing comorbidities. And they combined heart failure and death into one column because the numbers of each are low. Compared with conventional myocarditis, the relative risk of heart failure or death for people aged 12 to 39 who got myocarditis following vaccination was 0.5, so lower, although this wasn't statistically significant. For those who got myocarditis after COVID-19, the relative risk of heart failure or death was 2.87, and this was statistically significant. So what this means is myocarditis following COVID is 5.74 times more likely to lead to heart failure or death than myocarditis following vaccination in healthy people aged 12 to 39. Now, it is important to note that this study was looking at the incidence of heart failure and death in the 90 days after hospital admission for myocarditis. So obviously anything that occurs after that isn't going to be captured. And also, they didn't establish causality. So some of the events will be incidental because there is a baseline rate of heart failure and death across the whole population. But essentially, the study is showing that the rare cases of myocarditis that occur following vaccination have a better clinical outcome than cases following COVID or from other causes. So how did anti-vaxxers manage to turn this into a vaccine myocarditis bad news story? This is the start of a thread from a vaccine misinformer. New Nordic study, 
follow up late winter, early spring 2022, four times more cases of post vax myo than post COVID myo, greater than 10 times more in 12 to 24 year olds, two times as many post vax heart failure diagnoses than post COVID. But the author's conclusions may surprise you. She then goes on to say, the authors conclude that per myocarditis case, and that's all in caps, the risk of heart failure was lower post vax than post COVID or post conventional myo. True explanation mark, but they aren't using infections or number of vax as denominators. By late w- winter 2022, at least as many people were infected as vaccinated. So she's trying to suggest that the study shows that myocarditis following vaccination is a bigger problem than myocarditis following COVID. However, she doesn't offer any evidence for her claim that at least as many people were infected as vaccinated by late winter 2022. And it's definitely not true. But that's only one issue with her claims. There are two more. Firstly, the study is only counting myocarditis cases after a positive COVID test. People who got COVID but didn't have a test will be included in the conventional myocarditis figures and therefore myocarditis following a COVID test will be undercounting the total number of myocarditis cases following COVID. Secondly, the whole point of vaccination is to reduce the severity of COVID and its complications. So you would expect that people getting COVID after being vaccinated are at lower risk of myocarditis. But don't take my word for it that anti-vaxxers are misrepresenting the study. This is a tweet from one of the authors of the study. Public service announcement. Our recent study on myocarditis is a prognostic study of myocarditis patients. It is not a study designed to compare excess risk of myocarditis following vax versus infection. Please interpret responsibly. And of course, there is no reason to try to determine the incidence of myocarditis following COVID or the vaccine from a study that wasn't designed to do it. There are numerous studies that have been designed to do it. In fact, so many studies have been done, researchers have even done a meta-analysis. And this is what they found. If anyone is not familiar with meta-analyses, this figure is what is known as a forest plot. And it shows the results of each study analysed in blue, as well as the overall result when studies are combined in red. If a result is to the right of the vertical line and the error bar doesn't cross the line, it means there is an association between myocarditis and the intervention. So if we look first at COVID, we can see that all studies show that there was an association between COVID and myocarditis. And the combined effect has a risk ratio of 14.82, which means you are 14.82 14.82 times more likely to get myocarditis if you get COVID than if you don't. And these were all studies on unvaccinated people. And the reason I know this is because I went back to the original studies and checked the dates they covered. There is, of course, also an increase in risk after vaccination, but the risk is much lower at 1.95. This means that there is a seven times greater chance of getting myocarditis after COVID infection than after COVID vaccination. Now, as I mentioned, the myocarditis rates following COVID in the meta-analysis are for people who are unvaccinated. We would expect the rates to be lower for those who are vaccinated. Now, I'm not familiar with any studies that have specifically looked at this, which doesn't mean there aren't any, but I haven't seen them. What I have seen, though, is a number of studies showing that vaccination reduces 
adverse cardiovascular events, which are also known to occur following COVID. And a new study has just been published. It is um, fortunately behind a paywall, but I will provide a link in the video's description to where you can read a copy of it. The title of the study is Impact of Vaccination on Major Adverse Cardiovascular Events in Patients with COVID-19 Infection. Now, what they did in this study is they looked at whether both partial and full vaccination protected against major adverse cardiovascular events following COVID. Partial vaccination meant 14 days or more after one dose of mRNA vaccine and full vaccination meant 14 days or more after one dose of J&J vaccine or 14 days or more after two doses of mRNA vaccine. It was quite a large study. There were 1,934,294 patients and 217,843 of them were vaccinated. And there are two reasons why there were more unvaccinated people than vaccinated. Firstly, the study started in March 2020 and everyone was unvaccinated then. Secondly, contrary to what some people claim, being vaccinated does in fact reduce your chances of getting COVID. So we would expect more unvaccinated people than vaccinated people to get it. So they followed these patients for six months after infection and the results can be seen in this figure here. The red dotted line is patients who were fully vaccinated. The green dotted line is patients who were partially vaccinated. And the blue line is patients who were unvaccinated. And the shaded areas are the confidence intervals. As you can see, people who are vaccinated are significantly less likely to suffer from major adverse cardiovascular events following COVID than people who are unvaccinated. In fact, fully vaccinated people are 41% less likely to have an event and partially vaccinated people are 24% less likely. And one more thing that I will mention for the eagle-eyed, the first number under the figure is a typo. It should say 1,716,451. Now, you may be wondering what is meant by major adverse cardiovascular events. Me too. It generally means myocardial infarction, stroke and cardiovascular mortality. But some authors use slightly different definitions and include a few extra things. And to be honest, it's not entirely clear to me what definition they've used in this study as the information provided is quite brief as it's only a letter to the editor. However, the study is being presented soon at a scientific conference, so more information will be available soon. This is another paper where they looked at a similar thing. And in this case, it is clear exactly what they were measuring. In this paper, they measured the association between vaccination and acute myocardial infarction and ischemic stroke after COVID-19. And they were specifically looking at hospitalizations for these events between 31 and 120 days after COVID diagnosis. And consistent with the previous study, they found that full vaccination against COVID-19 was associated with a reduced risk of acute myocardial infarction and ischemic stroke after COVID-19. For acute myocardial infarction, the reduction in risk is 52%. And for ischemic stroke, the reduction is 60%. Also, a reduction was seen across all subgroups, although some did not reach statistical significance. So, in summary, the new study confirms what other studies have also shown, and that is that myocarditis following COVID vaccination is milder than myocarditis following COVID. The study doesn't provide any information on myocarditis incidence, but other studies have. 
and it is seven times more likely following COVID in the unvaccinated than following COVID vaccination. And getting vaccinated decreases your risk of adverse cardiovascular events following COVID. However, none of this means that myocarditis following vaccination shouldn't be taken seriously. It should. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you, because that means that more people will see the video. And of course, Thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. A few people have asked me about the ONS data and some people's misrepresentation of it, and so I will be making a video about that, but it's probably a week away because Cindy and I have got some walks to go on and stuff. But anyway, there will be more videos coming, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.